Hi guys, welcome back to Algo Test. In this video, we're going to be discussing the different execution settings you can use when you're deploying a strategy or a portfolio live in the market. We've made our execution engine pretty robust and we've also enabled a lot of features that you can control because after all, they're your strategies and you should have exact control on how you want to deploy them while you let us do all the heavy lifting and the actual execution of your strategy. So let's get straight into it. Right now I'm on the Algo Test landing page. I'm gonna click on go to dashboard. So now we're gonna to go to live trade and we're gonna just select any random strategy and click on edit execution. So here you can see a plethora of different options. Now we're gonna ignore this on candle close and on LTP part for now. We'll make a separate video about that so it can have all of the attention it needs. Instead, we're gonna focus on all the other settings you can see over here. So let's start from the left. First and foremost, you see if you wanna execute an NRML or MIS order, which if you're trading, I'm sure you're very familiar with. Next, you see targets or stop loss reference price. Basically, you have two options here, traded or trigger. So when we say traded, and we say trigger, there are two different things. Trigger, as the name suggests, is the price at which your trade is actually triggered, but not executed. So let's say if you wanna sell an option which is priced at 100 rupees, and it gets triggered at, let's say, 101, but it's traded at 100. That's the difference between the two. So you can choose whether you want the target or stop loss reference price to be either trigger or traded. If it's trigger, then your target and your stop loss, whatever, whether you set percentage, points, whatever it is, it'll be based off of the trigger price. And if you set traded, then the same thing applies, the stop loss or target, percentage, points, whatever you've chosen. It's gonna be on the basis of the traded, the actually executed price. Next, you have delay entry buy. So over here, if you wish, you can delay your entry by a certain number of seconds. This is very useful if let's say you have multiple legs of you know short options and you wanna fund those short options by buying some legs. Now, of course, we do not encourage you use penny options just as a mechanism to you know, obtain margin benefit uh, without doing any calculation of position sizing. But of course, if you so wish, you can do that. So if I wanted to sell a, a straddle, um, two straddles, let's say, and I wanna fund that by buying legs, then I would use this delay entry feature for the short legs, let's say maybe 15 seconds or something like that. So I want my buy legs to have the time to be executed, and then I want my um, short legs to be executed 15 seconds later. All right, so next we have entry order type. Let's talk about what these mean. So first and foremost, let's discuss what trigger buffer, limit buffer, and buffer type means. Buffer type, you have two options, percentage and points. For now, we're gonna set two and five, trigger buffer two and limit buffer five. Let's head on to our Google Sheet. So. Like I said, let's take the example of selling an option. Say we wanna sell a rupees 100 option and we set our stop loss percentage at 20%, that makes our stop loss 120 rupees because remember, we're selling an option. Our trigger buffer is set at two and limit buffer is set at five. So what does this mean? Now, essentially, trigger buffer is the actual buffer that you have before a trade gets executed. So with this buffer, your trade will begin to get triggered, but not executed. And limit buffer is the extent, the price extent to which this trade can be taken based off of whatever you set. So in our example, we set two and five, right? So what does this mean? This means I wanna sell a 100 rupees option and I want this trigger to start at 102 rupees. It's like telling you, telling, telling the execution engine that, hey, I wanna sell this for 100 rupees, but of course prices fluctuate by the millisecond. So I want you to get ready to execute it at 102 before, you, before it reaches a price of 100. And then with limit price, you're essentially saying, I understand even with these in place, it's not possible to always get your exact price at the exact time. So it's okay if you don't get 100, but I want you to stop at 95. So below 95, the trade will not be executed. Make sense? Finally, over here, you have an option that says convert to market after X seconds. If you want to convert it to a market order after whatever number of seconds, you can do so. Now, this third section is exit order type. Once again, we have, of course, the market option. However, market orders can lead to slippages, like we said earlier. 
Um, therefore, we would recommend you use limit orders. You can see three of the same options, buffer type, trigger buffer, limit buffer, and they work in the same way. So let's talk about these three first. Let's discuss these two new options, monitoring continuous and frequency. So with monitoring, you have two options, continuous and delayed. So let's first start with continuous and a frequency of, let's say, 10 seconds. Okay, so entry price, we wanna sell at 100, stop loss 20%. Stop loss becomes 120 rupees. We want to monitor this continuously and the frequency is set at 10 seconds. One more thing we've added here is let's say in my strategy, I've put in a TSL, a trailing stop loss of points one, one. So for every one point move in my favor, I trail my stop loss by one point. So in this case, if I've executed the trade and then the price uh, goes from 100 to 99, my stop loss will be trailed to 119, right? Because my stop loss price is 120. So TSL 11, and now let's see what happens in this situation. Time is 9.20 and five seconds. So in this five seconds, let's say the premium has moved from 100, which is where your price was traded, your, your option was traded, and it's now at 90. So that means that's 10 points in your favor, right? And at 9.20 and 10 seconds, it's at 95. So if you recall, we've set our frequency to 10 seconds. So which of these two is gonna be used for trailing the actual stop loss, right? Because one is at 90, which was 10 points in your favor, therefore your stop loss should be 110. And the other is 95 by 10 seconds, which is what we've set in our monitoring uh, continuous frequency. So which of the two is gonna be used? When you set continuous, we're going to use the one that's most favorable for you. So in this case, the most favorable trailing is 90, right? The high basically. So our new stop loss becomes 110. Now, if you were buying the option, it would be different. The logic remains the same, but like I said, monitoring continuous looks for the most ideal situation for you as a buyer or a seller. So we look for the high. So let's say we want to buy a, an option that's priced at 100 rupees stop loss is the same 20 percent now my stop loss price is going to be 80 instead of 120 because i'm buying an option this time monitoring is continuous frequency 10 seconds and trail stop loss 1 1. so every time the premium that i've the option that i've bought increases in price by one rupee my stop loss is trailed by one rupee so time 9.20.05 the premium is moved is at 110 now and at 9.20 and 10 seconds the premium is now 105. Finally, we have monitoring delayed. We're gonna leave it at 10 seconds. Back to the sheet, let's explain this example now. So we're again, we wanna sell an option with 100 rupees, stop loss 20%, so my stop loss is 120. This time, monitoring is delayed, frequency remains the same at 10 seconds, and TSL also remains the same at one is to one. So at time 9.20 and five seconds, the premium is at 90 and 9.20 and 10 seconds, the premium is at 95. This time, which stop loss is going to be considered? Well, when you set monitoring delayed, it waits for whatever the price is at the whatever second you set. So in this example, I've set 10 seconds for my frequency and at 9.20 and 10 seconds, the price is 95. So it disregards the previous price movement up until the point that you've set the frequency at, and we've set it at 10 seconds. So in this case, my stop loss will be 115. Once you set whatever execution settings you wanna set, all you have to do is click on update execution settings, and then you can deploy your strategies as per normal. So thanks for watching this video, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you and found it helpful. We're coming with a lot more product videos and a lot more updates. Let us know in the comments what you want us to make a video on and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next one.